I'm Char and this is South Bank Portrait by Ian McClarty. This was made for the Multiplicity Game Jam as part of the Free Play Independent Games Festival here in Melbourne. It's available on Itch.io for pay what you want with proceeds donated to the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre. This game was created using images and sounds from the South Bank area of Melbourne and inspired by a series of talks which unfortunately I missed, but explored topics including cultural erasure, activism and connection to land. Certainly over the years I've been attending free play, there's been an ongoing discussion theme about what it means to create a specifically Australian game, and whether there are obvious common threads or cultural identity present in the games made here. Sometimes that topic's gotten awkward, with people feeling like they were being pressured towards stereotypes, or having the cultural aspects of their creations ignored just because they didn't include a boxing kangaroo or something. Any art will naturally reflect the things you think about and your own place in the world, and we have some important history in areas like activist games. At the same time, there is some embarrassment about Australian culture, or a perceived lack of it, and sometimes the need to be able to fit into a more global context. Certainly, at least some Aussie-made games deliberately don't make their roots obvious. Thankfully, I think we've moved beyond that discussion somewhat, and can have more detailed discussions that recognise the things we do have. But I'm still interested in digital games that are unambiguously from and about a place. And even better when they can manage not to ignore the complexity of that location. Which could be challenging in a small project. Sense of place is so important but difficult to pin down. For starters even whether it has much to do with the place itself, or if it's just the feelings people project onto it. Moving around South Bank, you can go quite quickly from retail spaces and restaurants, to art spaces, to green space and so on. And that feels a lot the same, even in this choppy, abstracted form. This is where I live, and I spend a lot of time walking around in Melbourne, so this is very familiar. In some ways over-familiar. The city has a way of getting in your blood, I think. It's beautiful and slightly terrifying. It repels me and draws me to it in equal amount. The main thing I find myself wishing for here is a section in the rain, or better yet, that night would fall. I don't really get to demand more from a game jam game, but if I imagine a city, I'll generally think of it at night, full of shadows and glittering lights. Walking at night has its own character, and still with the sense of people all around. That's a lot of where I attach meaning to places. But maybe it's useful to be playing in this daytime version. Nothing here is stable, constantly shifting at least a small amount, which also seems right. It's difficult to find stillness or quiet. That's exciting, but sometimes difficult, with so many elements mixing and people coexisting. There has to be room for all of that somehow, and there is if we can get our priorities straight. But there will always be something a bit overwhelming about dense, populated spaces, with so much movement and colour. Different elements trying to attract attention towards their own important part of it. The alternative title for this game is Portrait of a Stranger. None of the images used to make up this landscape are of people, but people are here nonetheless. And the city itself is a character with its own personality. There is also a similar game that was shown at the same festival that lets you walk across a landscape made of your own face, which I did get to play with briefly, surprisingly. So I had a chance to ask how confronting any of this is supposed to be, but I didn't. Using people's faces in particular seems to me like it's setting out to be unsettling, but I'm less sure about this landscape. Even as someone who lives here, the city can be a stranger full of uncertainty. The backdrop of unknown voices and snippets of music from South Bank's many buskers helps to ground it, if anything. 
The presence of strangers creates the landscape. Voices are texture I don't attempt to pass into understandable words, like a lot of song lyrics. But please don't interpret that as racial or cultural colorblindness from me. Many communities form both Melbourne and this game. Diversity is the backdrop of life as I know it, not sameness. Cultural fragments blend and feed into each other, but they never settle into a homogenous mass. A portrait can mean so many things, but it's at least an attempt to capture something. Here many things are hinted at about my city, and of course I'll have my own sense of what that means. Repurposed images here lose some of their original context and can become something else. A piece of rubbish that catches the light in a particular way can seem like something more precious. Colourful cake icing becomes a gaudy carpet, and jagged protrusions can seem to cover the ground in teeth. But the core of the place isn't lost, and some things retain their more concrete meaning. The toilet is very obvious, which is one of the confronting aspects, I guess. Being able to understand what we're looking at through acknowledging the more base and embarrassing aspects of humanity, though also the more universal bits, if I want to be cheap about how I analyse that. But to me it feels more like it's about contrast, and a bathroom has a particular tone that does actually form an important part of impressions of a place. Occasional snippets of text stand out from the confused background, and regions formed from more natural colours and patterns still feel different to the built elements present, although even the plants have been placed according to a very deliberate human design. These digital hills and valleys can be very steep, but they're easy to move through anyway, gliding across a range of experience in a moment. Feels like a very urban quality to me to have so much stimulation that it's easy to skip over a lot of it without really looking at it. This version is probably more manageable, being only a small part of what's there in reality, and also not doing anything to impede movement. Direction is unimportant here, any choice will produce a similar progression through these segments, although it is important to move in some direction. Freedom of movement is the part that feels least like reality to me, it creates a dreamlike quality. I'm tempted to make some comparisons and contrasts here to Doom Dream, another recent game by the same developer, but I also don't feel quite right about going there. It's a very different kind of dream. It's rare to feel this unrestricted, even away from the city or in other digital places can leave you without a good sense of perspective or anchor to understand where you are. First few seconds of the game aren't on this recording, but you drop in from slightly above ground level, like a displaced person in an unfamiliar place. Sometimes it's hostile. Even up versus down doesn't work in exactly the way we expect. The sky potentially formed from objects on the ground and so on. Sound becomes more important to interpreting the world. In moments when even that isn't enough, it's like the world has broken down entirely into unsettling noises, confused images and jittery static. But in my mind I can't accept that as the predominant meaning here. This place is still my home and for all its flaws there's comfort in that. I don't know whether other people will be able to say the same.